Hey scrollers, Intarsia. Don't know if you're really familiar with it. If you're not, do some searches on it. It's really cool stuff. It's basically painting with wood. And uh, it looks extremely intimidating to do. It looks like, you know, only the best of the best could do it. But that's really not the case. I mean, when I first started Intarsia, which it took me a while to actually start doing Intarsia because I was intimidated by it. I didn't think there was any way I could actually make something so nice but it's really not that difficult and uh, I want to show you just how easy it actually is you don't have to have tons and tons of fancy sanding equipment which is kind of a myth that's out there you can do it with some basic sanding equipment and a scroll saw of course you gotta have a scroll saw it'd be kind of difficult to do without a scroll saw but anyway we're going to do this little seashell project it's very basic very simple but it gives you all the aspects that you're going to need to do in Tarja now I do Tarja my own way I do it a lot different than most other people out there if you do it a different way it's perfectly fine nothing to worry about you just keep doing it your way but this is the way I do it I find it extremely easy and it works for me so I just wanted to show everybody that there are different ways of doing things so anyway we're going to start with the seashell this one right here I had to turn this into six videos because it's just too much information to try to cover in one video so I split it into six parts that way you can watch it in your leisure and hopefully you'll get something out of it and actually if you've never tried Intarsia hopefully you'll try it out after this video and if you already do Intarsia, maybe you might pick something up here and there. So anyway, hope you enjoy it and let's get busy. The first thing I like to do is secure my pattern to uh, my work surface. This happens to be the top of my workbench, but honestly, you could do this to make it portable for people that don't have a nice big spot and need to move it around. You can just put it on a piece of plywood or any other type of board you, you might have handy. Once the pattern's secure, I like to give it a little extra protection, especially down here in, in Florida. In the summertime, it gets really hot, and uh, it's not entirely impossible to drip sweat on it or spill a coffee on it or your beer. So what I'll do next is go ahead and put just some packing tape over the top of the pattern. This way, if anything does spill, the pattern's protected, the ink won't run all over the place. Okay, now that it's protected, there's a few other reasons why I do this. I like to glue my pieces up onto the pattern, and now the glue won't stick. So. I can use this pattern multiple times and just wipe the glue off when I'm done with it and everything you're good to go for the next time you want to use it. Another reason I like to put the packing tape down is for the tracing paper. I like to tape the tracing paper down. And by doing so, the tracing paper won't wiggle as I'm trying to trace the pattern out because that can make for an inaccurate tracing. The more secure everything is while you're tracing, the better off you're going to be. Before I start to trace out, is figure out which piece is the piece I'm going to start with. I like to pick a central piece and work from the center out. So in this particular case, this piece here, I'll mark on here as one. That's another advantage to the packing tape is you can write on it and wipe it right off afterwards or use an eraser now it's gone so we'll put the one back and in this particular case it flows this direction so I'm going to go one two three four five and six this way and then once this is done then I'll start working back this way so this will be seven eight nine and ten okay so now that we've got our central piece 
designated as number one. We'll take a little piece of tracing paper, cut basically at a size with a pair of scissors or whatever you've got. I'll tape it down the four corners, the two corners on top, and then pull it good and tight. Whoops. Pull it tight as you're pressing it down. And three pieces on that little piece should be good enough. As you can see, I can see the pattern very clearly through the tracing paper. So now I'm simply going to take a mechanical pencil. I like using mechanical pencils because the lead's always the same diameter. So when it wears down, it doesn't get fatter because that can be a problem when you're cutting if your line gets too fat. This one happens to be a 0.5 millimeter, even though it really doesn't matter whatever size lead you're using, just as long as uh, it stays the same consistency as you go around. So let me go ahead and trace this out. After tracing the piece, I do like to put the direction arrow of the grain on the pattern so that I don't have to come back and keep looking at the main pattern. So now when I place, cut this out and place it on the wood, I'll know which direction I need to orientate it on the grain itself. Now that it's traced out, I'll simply pull the piece up, take my handy dandy little scissors here and just Cut the basic outline. Doesn't really matter how close you get to the line. Now as you can see we have our first piece of tracing paper cut out to put on our first piece of wood. The reason I like the tracing as opposed to printing out bunches of different patterns and using all that paper and ink is just for that reason, basically. I'm cheap, I'm, I'm lazy. I don't like to use all that paper and all that time printing several copies of the same thing when it's easier to just go ahead and trace it out. And as you can see, I'm not a very good tracer. Look how squiggly that line is. But you know what? When it comes time to cutting, I'm not going to cut it crooked. I'm not going to follow all these little squiggly lines. I'm just going to go ahead and follow the line, cut it, and it'll be nice and straight. And that'll make my next cut much more accurate. And you'll see that as we progress. Well, I must apologize for that being really, like, boring. But, uh... It actually is pretty important to starting off right. If you, you have your pattern properly protected and, and you do some proper tracing, makes this whole thing much easier. So sorry I had to put you through that. I promise they get better. The rest of them do get better. I made these videos over a year ago and I'm just now finally getting down to actually re-editing them and putting them online. So I apologize for some of the footage not being real good.